Hi, this is John Nelson. Thanks for joining me. This is the Grand Canyon flipped inside out, reversed, inverted, the Grand Mountain. So sometimes I have a hard time looking at the absence of something and realizing how big it is. And so I thought, why not reverse that and uh, get a sense of how big the Grand Canyon is by making it rise out of the ground instead of come uh, and get scooped out of the ground. So here's ArcGIS Pro and I've created a new local scene. And I'm zooming in to my area of interest, which of course is the Grand Canyon. And I've changed my base map to satellite imagery. And I've added a digital elevation model, a DEM. And now I'm opening the raster tools. And I'm going to choose negate. Raster tools are incredible. So I just inverted my DEM and now I'm going to save it as a new image. And this is a new image that I'll then point to as my new fake inverted elevation source. So in the ground row in the elevation surfaces area, I've, I've pointed to that and I've turned off the old one. And now, it's kind of hard to see, so I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit. Now it's a mountain instead of a valley. So here's the old one. You can see it kind of dips in like the real Grand Canyon does. And here's my new fake inverted one where uh, up is down and down is up. Cats are sleeping with dogs. It's crazy. So let's take a look at my color scheme. The default color scheme for a DEM is black to white. And I'm going to make it like misty white to fully transparent to give this sense of scale and depth atmospheric perspective because it rules and now I've opened up the raster functions and I've I've done a hill shade on that inverted elevation DEM and uh, I'm gonna play with that color value too so it only paints in the shaded pixels and now we've got kind of a, a mountainous Grand Canyon Grand Mountain Grand Canyon Mountain Mount Canyon Mount Grand so I'm gonna create a new layout and I've inserted my local 3D scene into it and I've and I've gotten rid of the margins and the outline and stuff like that which I don't like. Uh, and now I'm gonna add a rectangle overlay atop my whole layout and in this I'm just gonna give it a smooth uh, semi-transparent to fully transparent white gradient starting at the top and this gives a really nice sense of atmospheric perspective which is especially helpful for a project like this uh, I mean you can kind of see how in the distance it looks like it fades out if that weren't there everything would look crisp and full which doesn't really happen in real life and so it kind of helps sell that sense of reality now I'm gonna duplicate this scene and use it as a little overview map. Now why didn't I just use the same map twice with a different view? Uh, the reason is because I want to um, give my overview map some vertical exaggeration. The map, the main map, is just one-to-one. -one. That's actually how tall a Grand Canyon would look if it were flipped inside out. But in this overview map I wanted to s give a little bit more context so I exaggerate it. I'll show you that in a second. So instead of one, I'm setting it to six. And I'll tilt it a little bit. You can kind of see how the mountains grow up a little bit more severely than they had before. I was looking at this and I was like, man, my, my mist doesn't look quite right. I'm gonna push and pull it a little bit. That's one of the cool things about working with pros. You can push and pull the transparency and color sliders and see what works and see what doesn't. And it renders so quickly that, I mean, there's, there's no investment there. And I was like, this just doesn't look right though. Oh, it's because I had my mist under the shadows. Real life doesn't work like that. So then when I flipped them, now it looks real, right? It looks 3D. Uh, so my overview map, instead of just a black outline, I want to give it a subtle little drop shadow effect. And so I've chosen a gradient stroke instead of a solid stroke. And I just give it a semi-transparent black to fully transparent black stroke. And I give it a kind of a thicker width and then I offset it by half that width so it doesn't render on top of the map. 
and then I just play with the settings so that it, it looks smooth and round at the corners. And that's it. That's my uh, fake inverted Grand Canyon mountain map and I'm exporting it as a PNG and POW! I find that sometimes the best way to understand something is to think of its exact opposite. So hopefully this kind of helps you guys understand the scale of the Grand Canyon and hopefully you learned a trick or two in this how-to video. So hope you give it a shot and thanks again for watching. Have a great day. Bye.